Chapter six, the climb. Crack, thunk, clang. Roz was having a little trouble climbing the cliffs. She had a new dent on her rear and a long scrape down her side. And she was just about to get another ding when a crab scuttled out from under a piece of driftwood. The crab looked up and immediately showed off its giant claws. Everyone was afraid of his claws, but not the robot. She just looked down and introduced herself. Hello, crab. My name is Roz. After a brief standoff, the crab cautiously backed away. And that's when Roz noticed how easily he moved over the rocks. With his wide stance and his grippy feet, the crab could crawl up and down any rock face. So Roz decided to try his climbing technique. She spread her arms wide and clamped each of her hands onto the cliffside. She jammed one foot into a crack and lifted her other foot onto a narrow ledge, and just like that, she was climbing. Roz moved awkwardly at first. A chunk of rock crumbled in her hand, and she had trouble finding footholds. But as she climbed higher and higher, she started to get the hang of it. Seagulls squawked from their cliff nests and soared away when the robot came too close, but Roz pays, paid them no mind. She was focused only on getting to the top. Up and up and up she went, methodically climbing past nests and ledges and tiny trees rooted in the cracks. And before long, our robot felt the soft soil of the island beneath her feet. Hmm. Well, chapter 7. The wilderness. Animal sounds filled the forest. Chirps and wing beats and rustlings in the underbrush. And then, from the sea cliffs, there came new sounds. Heavy, crunching footsteps. The forest animals fell silent. And from their hiding places, they watched as a sparkling monster stomped past. But the forest was not a comfortable place for Roz. Jagged rocks and fallen trees and tangled underbrush made it difficult for her to walk. She stumbled along, struggling to keep her balance until her foot snagged and she toppled over like a piece of timber. It wasn't a bad fall, no dings, no dents, just dirt. But Roz was programmed to keep herself in good working order and once she was back on her feet, she immediately began cleaning herself off. Her hands darted around her body, quickly brushing and picking off every speck of dirt. Only when the robot was sparkling again, did she continue through the forest. Roz stumbled on until she found a patch of ground that was flat and open and carpeted with pine needles. It seemed like a safe place, and safety was all the robot really wanted. So she stood there, motionless, all perfect lines and angles set against the irregular shapes of the wilderness. Chapter 8. Pine Cone. If you stand in a forest long enough, eventually, something will fall on you. And Roz had been standing in the forest long enough. A gentle wind whispered through the treetops and then, thunk, a pine cone bounced off her head. The robot, sorry, the robot looked down and watched the pine cone roll to a stop. It seemed harmless, so Roz went right back to doing nothing. A few hours later, a gust of wind rushed through the treetops and then thunk, the robot looked down as another pine cone rolled away. And a few hours after that, a howling wind tore through the treetops, it bent trunks and shook branches and then thunk, 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 pine cones began raining down, thunk, thunk. Roz felt something like annoyance, thunk. She quickly scanned the area for somewhere safe from pine cones and she spotted the perfect place when she looked up at the huge rocky shape that towered above the forest.